Good evening. Today is January the 23rd, 2015. We're live here at the F.G. Clark Activity Center for tonight's game between these two District 6-1A rivals, the Madison Prep Academy Chargers and the Southern Lab Kittens. This is Eric Hatfield. Uh, Gerard Piper will be joining me shortly. Uh, we had uh, some connectivity issues, some problems getting up to the Internet that uh, precluded us from showing the first quarter of this high school contest, but we are back in the saddle now and happy to bring you this uh, this first-rate prep basketball action here on LouisianaAllAmericanSports.com. Just to catch you up, Southern uh, Lab is trailing Madison Prep right now by the score of 1915, and uh, the Kittens do have the basketball. Now, the last time we brought you Kittens basketball, uh, they were missing a couple of key players who are in the game tonight, uh, including uh, Bladrick Veal, number one. Uh, he is in the game. He did not get to play last time. We had a chance to chat with him before the start of the game. Gerard Piper was uh, taking note of all the action uh, while I was getting us ready on the air. So, uh, Piper, if you want to catch us up, uh, catch the, the people up on where we are, go for it. I want to welcome everybody to Louisiana All-American Sports Show Game of the Week. This is Gerard Piper, and I'm here with my friend Eric Hatfield, and I'm just so excited to be here. There's so many people here. It's a real big game that we got going tonight. The game started out with Madison Prep putting a lot of defense on Southern Lab Kittens. Um, it was kind of stalemate at first. In the first quarter, it was a lot of fouls, giving a lot of defensive pressure on both sides. And when Madison Prep started to apply the defense a little bit more, the full court press, it started to pull away a little bit. Southern Lab, on the other hand, got a few turnovers and was able to stay in the game with free throws. But Brandon Sampson for the Madison Prep Chargers has been the man um, of the night so far. He scored at least 10 points. I've seen him make a couple of three-point shots. He's had a couple of blocks. He's even had a dunk uh, in the game. And there he goes again with just finished hitting the three-point shot. So now the score is 22 to 17. There goes another turnover, and the Chargers have the ball. And Brandon Sampson comes up with the ball again. He can't touch it. Euchre Lazarus gets the ball. And so right now, so far, uh, the Madison Prep Chargers has applied the pressure. And they've been putting a lot of inside pressure on the Sudden Lab kids. But the Sudden Lab has been scrappy, real scrappy. They've been um, having a good defensive game so far. They got a few turnovers. And the fouls shooting good free throws at the uh, – at the foul line has been kind of keeping them in the game so far. Piper, thanks a bundle for catching us all up. And Piper was the man with the plan. He was taking notes. He was scratching stuff down right now. I saw, I saw his, uh, his, his dry erase board come out with the schemes and extra notes. <laughs> Appreciate yeah. you catching the audience up uh, because sometimes uh, technology is not always our friend. <laughs> right, right, exactly. And sometimes, you know, hey, but we're here now. Yes, sir. And we're good to go. And we got a good game going on so far. I counted before the game. There are probably about 600 people here tonight, Piper. I'm just, just eyeballing it as uh, Southern Lab misses. Uh, Brandon Sampson with the rebound. That was uh, uh, Jordan uh, Booker who uh, had missed that one. And there's a kick out to the outside from downtown, and uh, that's going to rattle off no good. I believe that was... Um... Oh, great pass right there to Brandon Sampson with the dunk. Behind the back pass right there. Now it looks like from Joshua LeBlanc to Brandon Sampson with the dunk for Madison Prep. And that takes the course, scores up to 26-17. to 17. Madison Prep with five minutes left in the second quarter. Southern Lab calls a timeout right there. That's uh, their second timeout already. they gotta, they got to keep some of those. They might need them later. They only have three remaining. And I don't think Coach Clark, I mean, he knows that their Madison Prep can run a very high, uh, fast-tempo offense. But, uh, you know, the game was very close at the end of the first quarter. And you look, I'm looking right here. So the difference is 9-2 to two here in the second quarter, just three minutes in. Just three minutes in. And Madison Prep. Has been applying so much defense. They've been getting so many turnovers off the defense, which causes or uh, creates easy buckets for them. So uh, here we go. Here come the uh, Southern Lab Kittens. That's uh, Tyler uh, Pen Pen. Oh, I always mess this one up. <laughs> Pen Yanavong with the rock. Uh, now uh, kicking it back to uh, Sheldon Carroll. Now they're going to get it down to Veal. Veal over to Carroll. Carroll's trying to go perimeter from the right wing. Puts it up. Rattles off no good. Uh, gets his own rebound in the lane. Goes up. Can't hang on. Can't get it in there. Now the ball's being scrambled for. Still in the uh, kitten's possession. Carroll with the basketball. Uh, he's going to kick it all the way over to the side. Veal went up. There's a lot of contact. The refs are swallowing the whistles here. It's a turnover. Brandon Sampson with the basketball. And there he goes. He kind of slid a little bit. The refs are letting these kids play tonight. Yeah, they're letting them play tonight. It's been a lot of uh, close calls, but so far they've been letting the physical. And 
Marcus Antoine, Demetrius Antoine takes the shot and he makes it. And here comes Southern Lab right back up, brings the ball. Tyler goes to the goal strong, Kanyana takes the con. Yeah. Man, I'm gonna get it, man. I'm gonna get that. I'm Prep caught with the rebound. Garner brings the ball down, swings it around to the corner to Marcus Bowder for three point shots. Get Gets their own rebound again. Demetrius Antoine swings it broad around to Browder again. Surveys the inside. Oh, that lack of that offensive rebounding by the Chargers will kill this kitten team if they don't if they don't get a chokehold on it. And that's kind of been the name of the game. They've been getting all the offensive rebounds. There to get a turnover by Tyler. Tyler surveys the field, swings it over to Blackie Field. Oh, oh. oh no, coming here. Get that out of here. Yeah, get that out of here. You already know what it was. Happy slapping. <laughs> oh man, you know what I mean. I don't see Blagic Beal getting rejected by too many high I don't see that either. Uh, six four, six uh, yeah, yeah. I've been checking him out. You know, he's a, he's a real good defender and looks like a real physical rebounder. He used to work on his shot a little bit. But I, I'm, I'm liking him more in football so far. Yeah, no, I think that's his, I think that's definitely his ticket. He can do this for fun. <laughs> right, right, right. Where he gets his, uh, his, uh, gets his stress release. Exactly. And I think this is, this is where he can get his conditioning and he can definitely uh, oh, yeah. work on his body and get his, you know, his conditioning more. For, um, ready for football oh, in the offseason. Joshua LeBlanc has some length. My goodness. I mean, he came from out of nowhere and swat that ball. Swat that ball but Bradgerville at the free throw line, he makes his first free throw. They actually call a foul on that play. It looks like a clean block. But I think they call a foul on the offseason rebound that he got. Right. It was after, I agree with you. So here come, boy, this is rough. Southern Lab with only three points in this period. With the basketball, the Chargers have got it right back. They're coming right down the court. Uh, they're going to rotate it around. Brandon Sampson with the rock. He's looking, 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 and uh, now they're going to kick it right back to uh, uh, Joshua Anderson. Anderson over to uh, number 11, Jalen Brown. Brown finds, I believe that's Antoine with the basketball. Uh, no, Thompson with the ball. Back over to Brown. Brown in the corner, and it's going to come right into your living room uh, as um, Jordan uh, Booker chased it out of bounds. And uh, let's see who has the rock. Yep. And see what I notice here is that the coach for the Madison Prep Academy has noticed the same thing. This is the most important time of the period right now with a minute and five seconds left. He brought all his starters back in to see if he can blow this lead open before halftime. And that is how Madison Prep rolls. That's how I've seen uh, Coach Jones do it in the past. And Brandon Sampson with the dynamic move right there. Right along the baseline. That looked kind of Jordan Ness a little bit. That was. He went around. He kind of, oh, my goodness. And oh, oh Jordan Booker. He goes hard to the wow. ground as he gets chopped down hard by number 25. Uh, Christian Thompson, that will no doubt uh, send uh, Booker to the line after the really hard foul, and uh, Southern Lab's got to make they got to make these foul shots. They just don't get around it. 44.9 seconds left. 45 seconds left. They're down right now. Jordan Booker had the line for his first free throw, and he misses it. And this has been a tell of the second quarter. They had a lot of opportunities to try to cut into this lead at the free throw line, but yeah. hey, you got to take advantage of these opportunities. They are, they are, and you you hit the nail on the head, uh, Piper. They are, they are letting some opportunities slip. Exactly, especially with a team like this, you're kind of overmatching coming in as an underdog. So all of the the little free points that you can get, those are the ones you really need. Yeah, you can't you can't afford to be giving them away. They do get the second bucket. That makes it 35-19, 16 point game, and the kittens cannot. <laughs> Cannot let it get any more distant than this. Brandon Sampson with the basketball. Uh, in the game, there are Antoine Sampson Brown, uh, number 10, uh, William Lloyd for the first time in this game, and number 24, uh, Kobe Julian. Sampson over to uh, 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 Antoine. I'm sorry, yes, to Antoine. And, uh, boy, he's looking. He can't find a break. Goes under, kicks it out to a wide open Brandon Sampson. Ball fakes, Booker bit all over it, floats it up with one hand, and good. That was a very pretty... One-handed float by Brandon Sampson off of the uh, assist under the paint uh, by his charge teammate number 10, William Lloyd. And three seconds left. So now takes the shot. Brandon Sampson with the rebound at the buzzer. Oh, and we're at halftime already, man. After, uh, uh, wow, uh, just a Madison, a Madison Prep-owned second quarter. The score at halftime, the Madison Prep Academy Chargers leading uh, the Southern Lab Kittens by the score of 37 to 19. You're watching... A Southern Lab Kittens Basketball on LouisianaAllAmericanSports.com. Well, Piper, anybody that's watched Louisiana All-American Sports long enough uh, knows my propensity to talk. But uh, since you definitely caught, I'd say, about 80% of the action, I'm going to let you do 100% of the talking inside the break here. Well, from what I saw um, from the first quarter, Eric, these guys came out very impressive. Madison Square, Madison Prep Academy Chargers came out very impressive um, from, from the first quarter on. Their defense was spectacular. 
Southern Lab Kittens came out a little bit sluggish, but they was um, they was real hype and they was real eager, and so the turnovers and the kind of kept them in the game in the first quarter. Second quarter, they turned it on even stronger. They came in, they kind of locked them down on the defensive end. They played full court press and was able to get the turnovers and get points off of turnovers. And Southern Lab couldn't make their foul shots, so they they only scored I think maybe three to four points in the se- whole second quarter, and that just just broke the lead wide open. And I'll tell you, I'm not gonna. You know, y'all know I like to have some fun and call time of death and start singing songs. I'm not ready to do that yet. But oh, they're, they're getting there in the parking lot. They're taking their little sips of brandy and getting ready because uh, Roseanne, Precious, and company uh, might be in this building by the third quarter. If there's another second quarter like this in the third quarter, I just want to wonder what coach is going to tell Southern Lab, uh, Kidna. What are they going to try to do to be able to try to adjust to the defensive pressure that Madison Prep Academy is putting on them? Well, I'm not a coach, and I don't play one on TV, but I've been around enough coaches to kind of know what the script is right now. They're likely going to say, number one, don't panic. Number two, stay with the process, stick with the game plan. That's what gets us here. They're probably going to have to get more aggressive on defense, and he's going to tell them whatever you do, you focus at the foul line. You can't give away the free points. And I think with Madison Prep Academy, I think what they should do is continue to actually do the same thing. Uh, they're putting a lot of pressure on the interior. They're coming in. They're putting a lot of pressure on on the guards. They're trapping them as soon as they inbound the ball, and it's been working for them. And why change something if it's if it's not broken? If it's if it's working for you, I think they have a clear advantage. They see how they want to play. I'm very impressed with this team and how they're coached. And from what I see, it, man, it was a great team. And I understand why they're 21 and one. They also shoot 62 percent from the field as a team, which is you know outstanding. 40 percent from three as a team. So this team is, is all, you know, cranked up and ready to go. So Southern Lab has a big task on their hands, down 18 here at halftime, you know. So they got a uh, hill to climb. So uh, with that, we'll be re- don't go anywhere. The second half will start in about seven minutes, and uh, we'll uh, let you enjoy the musical entertainment. Uh, don't go anywhere. You're w- watching Southern Lab Kittens Basketball on LouisianaAllAmericanSports.com. And we're getting ready for the second half. We've got 10 seconds for the second half, and the score is 37. Madison Prep Southern Lab, 19. You're listening to the Louisiana All-American Sports Show, Game of the Week. Be sure to tune in tomorrow at 11 o'clock a.m. for the Louisiana All-American Sports Show on WHYR with Eric Hatfield, yours truly, Gerard Piper, Perry Daniels, and the Professor T. Johnson as we bring you the latest and the greatest in the local sports the college and professional sports. And we're ready for the action again. I think that Madison Prep uh, coming into this into this game with the players that they have, the Brandon Sampson's, uh, what I hear is going to St. John's University. He's a standout uh, All-American point forward, really. You know, yeah. the guy has height. The guy has uh, uh, dribbling capabilities and from everything I said, incredible skill set all around. Yeah, I remember when he was a freshman, he was on the JV team. And I'm thinking to myself, how in the world is this kid on the JV team? I think there was some kind of transfer issue or something like that, so they couldn't play him. But I thought, oh, my God, when this, when this young man's allowed to suit up, Baton Rouge ain't going to know what hit him. And you know what? They wound up winning the state championship the next year. That was he, Jarrell Martin, Chad uh, Williams. And this team right now, I'm just looking at him. And I think we might have a champion in the making right before our eyes, at least if, if the first 22 games of the year plus the first half of this game is in the indicator as uh, Chris Allen puts it in to cut this lead down. And cut this lead down as Southern Lab gets the first basket of the second half. Brings the score 21 to 37 and down 16 now. Madison Prep Charters have brought the ball up. Number 25, Christian Thompson takes the three-pointer outside Woo! and hits. First three-pointer of the second half. No room for Christian Thompson. Goes to the man, Christian Thompson. Let's see what Southern Lab can do. Jordan Booker tried to get, get the ball. He passed the back. Southern Lab tried three point and couldn't quite get it. They get the offensive rebound. Carroll gets the rebound. Gets it over to Vladikville. He goes up and get it rejected. Boy, they, uh, you know, Southern That's Lab. the second one. And it looks like, I hope they're not pressing, and I hope like Sheldon Carroll didn't force that three point shot. I don't know what the play call was. But they can't get, they have plenty of time left. They can't get too aggressive too quickly. And we've seen teams make very rapid runs in high school basketball. So they've just got to maintain their poise and keep putting the ball in the hole, playing good aggressive defense. 
Exactly, Eric. I couldn't say it no better. Uh, that time, Madison Prep with the turnover, the travel that side, the travel, <coughs> excuse me, by the center number 14, Lazar. So Southern Lab brings the ball back up. They get the ball down to Bladdockville again inside. He goes up and he draws the foul. So he'll go to the foul line to shoot two. Guarding him was number 14, uh, Yurik Lazar. If that name sounds familiar, that's because he is uh, a relative of a uh, former LSU player. I want to say his name was Darnell Lazar maybe when he played at LSU. or I cannot remember his name. But anyway, this, this young man uh, also got a lot of playing time as a freshman. Now, now is he tall, but he looks big, big now. He yeah. was not always big. He was a, a slim, slim guy. Uh, from what Coach Perry Daniels told me, he used to eat candy and Snickers and Jolly Ranchers and all kinds of stuff 24-7. And he just he was one of those kids, and no matter what he ate, he stayed slim. It seems to be piling on a little bit, that plus the weight room. Uh, and he is a force. I'd be scared to go to the, uh, into the square with him. Yeah, he's a pretty big guy. Oh, and there he goes with the block again. That's his third block of the game. So here comes Thompson, comes out with the rebound. Sampson with a nasty move in the air, gets his own rebound and good. Brandon Sampson, unassisted. Brandon Sampson once again puts it back up. No defense right there. Here comes Jordan Booker. He's being worked pretty aggressively there by Joshua Robertson. Now once you step up, Gladrick Beal is getting crushed in the lane as Yurik Lazar rejects him. Here come the Chargers. One, two, step. I believe that's Jalen Brown, is it? It is, and there's a whistle. Let's see what the call is. It's got, looks like it's going to be a foul right there on, on Southern Lab for reaching in. Right as Jalen Brown was getting ready to go to the basket, so they call the, the foul on the floor, which looks like the Southern Lab kittens are going to take the ball out of bounds under the goal. Madison Prep calls timeout. So with a break in the action, the score, the Madison Prep Academy Chargers leading the Southern Lab Kittens. They're doubling the score. It looks like six touchdowns to three, but in fact it is 42-21. You're watching Southern Lab Kittens basketball on LouisianaAllAmericanSports.com. Timeout, Madison Prep. seems to me now that the game plan of Southern Lab Kittens came out with in the second half was to try to get the ball inside of, to Bladgerville, and that doesn't seem to be working too too good. I mean, it makes sense on paper. I understand why a normal, rational man, a real smart coach like uh, like Coach Clark would think that, but uh, Yurik Lazar is taking his logic and, uh, you know... <laughs> <laughs> done one of those with it. You know? yeah, <laughs> here, come, here come the Chargers. Exactly. He's getting crushed uh, down there. Uh, I, I, I kind of understand because I knew he wanted to come out of the second half and try to change the status strategy a little right. bit, which Bradyville goes out of the game now. And, um, he wasn't that effective. I think he probably he does better with rebounding and plays a lot of good defense. But trying to get him as a primary scorer or trying to get him as a low post presence I don't think it was the right call. Coach Clark has this look on his face like Mike McCarthy had at the end of the <laughs> NFC Championship game. You remember when he looked and he said, unbelievable? <laughs> now, he hasn't said those words, but he has the same expression right now, and that is uh, from downtown. Josh Anderson, hard off the back of the iron. And that's a foul, and that's going to be three shots, a block in the act of shooting. I believe that's against Jordan Booker. And now they're going to give Madison Prep free, uh, free points here, possibly, probably, perhaps. Bad uh, choice right there. That was a bad uh, mistake by Southern Lab that time to run in and follow a, a jump shooter shooting a three-point shot and give give him three shots. Fortunately, he missed the first free throw for uh, Southern Lab. He gets ready to take his second free throw, uh, Joshua Anderson, and he makes it. That's going to push the score up to a 22-point lead now. It's going to be up 43-21. to 21. You know, this team has got so much talent, Piper. I remember Justin Garner, number 12, and Delvin Spann, number three, as freshmen were critical, critical role players in that 2013 Madison Prep Championship team. These guys are on the bench, and they're juniors. And they were, they got, you know, Garner got a lot of starting time back then. Uh, Spann was a three-point specialist, and he was lethal. I used to call him Delvin Spann, the rifle man. These guys, I'm estimating, maybe played maybe f four or five minutes total. That is how much talent. I say not, not a crack on them. They're very talented kids, but that's how much talent they have. You can sit those guys down because you have guys who, uh, who you have on the floor in front of them. It's, it's amazing how much talent this team has. So Chris Allen kicks it out, and then, oh, good heads-up pass there by Booker. Goes down low. No good. Rebound by Roderick Hayes, and that shot is good off the uh, rebound. And that was Lazar with another block. He is impacting the game in a, in a big way. Nothing is going being able to – he's not allowing anything to – 
to come down low. Yurik Lazar was a menace as a freshman, and now that he's about an inch, two inches taller, and looks like about 20 pounds heavier, he is uh, he is Dennis Rodman, only somebody who can, you know, pass the ball well inside. One thing I remember about Lazar from his younger days is he's not a great, he wasn't a great offensive player. That could have changed, but. He has incredible vision. Oh, and a missed shot, but a rebound by the Chargers, no good. He has great vision in the paint. So even if he's down low and they have put two bodies on him, he can find, he has this uncanny ability for a big man to find open men. And speaking of the devil, Yurik Lazar, one, two, step, and good. On the assist, I believe that was Jalen Brown who kicked it to him. Madison Prep extends the lead to uh, 22 points. And he's pretty agile, too. Another steal right there. Christian Thompson. Christian Thompson. One, two, step. He waits, he waits, he waits, and he goes up. That was, oh, if he had made that, that would have been textbook. Good job. Rebound by a Jordan Booker. Booker crosses the timeline. He's going to turn it up. Now he slows it down. Now from the free throw line, from 16 feet, and good, Jordan Booker. Great shot right there by Jordan Booker. He hadn't called his name for a, a little bit in this game. He is the one that's going to have to be the spark plug for this Southern Lab kids. They want to make any kind of run. He's their best offensive player. He should be able to take control and try to find his, his way. So here come the Chargers again. That's, I believe that's Antoine with the basketball. And uh, let's see what he's trying to do. He's trying to get it down low. And uh, they're working near the baseline. As Yurik Lazar, he's going to step up into the paint. And that's what I'm talking about. Kicks to Christian Thompson. And uh, they're fighting for the rebound. Finally picked up by Chris Allen. But, Piper, do you see what I'm talking about with Lazar? He gets in the paint. They surround him, and he finds a man. He finds a man. His offensive skills needs a little bit of work. But this guy is actually agile. I've seen him running up and down the court. He's a big guy, but he's. He's pretty agile. Shannon Foreman, the latest to be added to the rejection line for the Kittens uh, with the ball. Thompson just took the bucket. Oh, boy, he almost shot it right in uh, Sheldon Carroll's face. Uh, nobody put a hand in his face. He had a clean look at the bucket. It's no good. And um, let's see. what Is that a timeout or is that a, a foul? What do we have here? And now checking in, number three, Delvin Spann. Uh, for the Chargers. That might be to put these uh, put the Kittens out of their, out of their misery right now. I think so, Eric. That last shot right there by Thompson, he had a wide open shot. He missed it. It was the second time in a, in a couple of sessions that he was able to shoot a wide open three. But he came up a little bit short, and I think because of his, he was kind of fatigued. He had been running up and down the court on a couple of fast breaks, and Coach let him get a, get a little bit of break that time. Antoine from the Rooter to the Tudor after the block by Josh LeBlanc. Uh, how often do you see a kid the size of Roderick Hayes get rejected, number 15? This young man, I'm guessing six. Let's see, well, actually, we got it right here. Roderick Hayes is six foot five, and he got rejected like he was a third grader. <laughs> and great hustle that time by uh, Demarius Antoine for the Madison Prep Charge. This guy's diving on the floor and bringing a lot of energy uh, to this team coming off of the bench. And that's what you need. Delvin Spann, the rifle man. Oh, well, too much, he, had, he had a little bit too much powder in that bullet. Picked up by Foreman. Foreman goes, uh, penetrates inside the lane, off the back of the iron, no good. And Delvin Spann. The diminutive Delvin Spann comes up with the rebound. Shortest man on the floor. Gets the rebound. And then stop him. No boxing out right there by Southern Lab Kittens, and they paid the price. Madison Prep has been on the, getting a lot of offensive rebounds tonight. They've lived on the boards tonight. They sure have. They have. Uh, they just they, they do everything well. They're fun to, they, they play good fundamental basketball. Uh, that is why they are so good. That's why they're, as, as their record is as impressive as it is. Kobe Julian is in the game. Uh, Panyanavong in the game also for the Kittens. Uh, Tyler Panyanavong uh, kicks it down to Bladrick Veal. Bladrick Veal from the uh, left elbow. No good. Rebound the ball. There's a whistle. It looks like his hand was slapped. And it's against Bladrick Veal. That's a foul. It's a hack. And uh, that's another team foul. And they're starting to, I believe that's the third one now against the Kittens. I, I think they got to correct the scoreboard there with 2.49 to go in this third quarter. Madison Prep starting to run away with this one here. They're starting to run away with it. They're getting a little bit frustrated right there. That was a reach-in foul. He was frustrated that he missed a shot on the other end. Oh, that didn't look too good. That's, there is Antoine. Oh, oh look at Coach Jones. What was that? <laughs> I know that look. I've been in the locker room I wish Coach we could Jones. take a picture of that. Right oh, now. man, yeah. I, I, well, that's, that's, and that's mild. Let me tell you, I, I have uh, had the privilege uh, in the early days of this program when uh, LouisianaAllAmericanSports.com exclusively covered the Madison Prep Chargers. They, we were actually in the locker room in between halves and quarters and before games. And let me tell you, if there is anybody I would not want to um, disappoint by doing something uh, ill-advised, it is Coach Jones. <laughs> uh, you might have a daddy, but he's your pa. <laughs> when you do so, look, look at Coach. Look at Coach. But uh, he, but I'll tell you oh, what, yeah. he teaches these kids very well, and they yeah. all come out excellent 
well-trained, disciplined athletes and young men and basketball players. Well, great job, great job, and big ups to this guy. Uh, he's doing a phenomenal job uh, with this team. When I look at him, he kind of reminds me of Nolan Richardson, you know. <laughs> he has some you know, of that he vibe. That he has of, that vibe to him. Yeah, he has that kind of aura to him. And it looks kind of cool and kind of fatherly, and then, boy, if you mess up, <laughs> whoo, you can fl- fry some eggs on his head, right. man. You can fry some eggs and bacon. <laughs> That, that kind of hog. Right. But, uh, but I'll tell you what, though. I had some intel. Coach Daniels actually told me that um, Coach Devin Clark, I didn't know this until early this week, Coach Clark is a former state champion. Uh, I want to say at no, either a state champion. I think he's a state champion at Northside. It was either a champion or a semifinalist. But uh, but he's a state champion. So Southern Lab, uh, they brought in, you know, he kind of got to the program a little late in the building process. Yeah. So it's, it's kind of taking some time for him to put his footprint on this team. But uh, we have a lot of coaching skill out here tonight on this floor before us. Exactly. I mean, he has, he has the pedigree. He's been here and done that. And what a great example to, uh, to have. I've, I've always liked the coaches of, that has had experience before, uh, either playing professionally or coach, uh, you know, in some type of capacity. I think you can connect with your team better, but not saying that some guys haven't played and been successful. Uh, a la, I think Bill Belichick, someone like that, right. you know, um, who wasn't a professional player, but right. of still is a great look, coach. Look at, look at his coaching. Uh, the, you know, he was on yeah, the – right. exactly. I mean, he was, he was, I believe, you and I talked about this a little while ago. I think it was on the Parcells tree. I believe, I know he came from very good stock. Yeah, he was on the Parcells tree, exactly. He was on the Parcells tree. And um, him and, of course, uh, the great coach for the 49ers. You're talking about the, the recently departed coach, Jim Harbaugh? No, not Jim Harbaugh. Uh, um, oh, oh, uh, Bill Walsh. Bill Walsh. Right, and his tree extends pretty deep. Right. The late, the late deep. great Bill Walsh. Right, the late great Bill Walsh, exactly. That's a man I really admire, both as a great coach and from what all of his players uh, told me about. He's a guy that, that really uh, took personal interest in all of his players' lives. So that's, that's what a great leader does. That's what a coach does. That's both in sports and in life. But I'm babbling a little bit. Justin Garner in the game now for the Chargers. Uh, kicks it out to uh, number 30. Oh, my goodness, that was nasty. Number 30, Jaron Whitfield just just buries the three-point shot. And here comes uh, Shannon uh, uh, Foreman and he goes hard into a uh, number 33, uh, Troy James, and there's a foul, and I think it's going to be a block on James. They're not going to give him the benefit. They're not going. They're saying his feet were not set. I think actually it was a charge. I just think that uh, the game is kind of getting out of reach, and they just <laughs> basically give him the call. It's just, not hurting anybody. Right, right, exactly. But it was a great effort. Uh, Foreman. Shannon Foreman actually went and went to the go hard. He, they didn't, so I give Southern Lab kids. A lot of credit. They still fight hard. They haven't given up. You know, the way that this team looks, they're still fighting hard. They still believe in that. And that's a, a testament to the coach. Always keep fighting. Absolutely. These kids have a lot of carry. We watch them hustle. I mean, we know that these, this team is going to keep on playing. Uh, let me just reset the lineups because we've given you all a little background. A little, told some stories around the fireplace. But uh, like uh, Paul Harvey, but uh, let me reset you who's on the floor. For the Southern Lab Kittens, Shannon Foreman, number 24. Tyler Panyanavong, number 21, as, as Foreman lays one up and in. Panyanavong, number 21. Sheldon Carroll, number 2. Uh, and uh, Bladrick Veal, number 1. And number 10, Troy, um, I'm sorry, Kyle Green in the game for the Kittens. For the Chargers, Josh LeBlanc, number 23. Kobe, I almost said Kobe Bryant. Kobe Julian, number 24. Uh, number 30. Uh, Jaron Whitfield and number 33, Troy James. Oh, my goodness. And if you saw that at home, that was not an optical illusion. That wasn't the screen pixelating. That was Kyle Green going about eight feet in the air and landing on the ground. Uh, you and I, the last time we were at F.G. Clark, talked about how young people can, t- can bounce back from a fall. Right, That's right. an example. Because, see, me, they'd have to roll the cart out for me. I'd have been like Aaron Rodgers <laughs> against Detroit at the end of the regular season, hauling me off to the locker room. Uh, most definitely, uh, Eric. These young guys are, are right now are so athletic these days. They're able to take a lick and they keep on ticking. That's why you go to the weight room, man. You, that, you, that is exactly why. You can resist injury and get up a lot faster when your muscles are hard. Exactly. I like Jerry Rice and Walter Payton. Oh, brother. You, you, Jerry Rice, both of those guys. Both of those guys way ahead. Oh, down low, wide open, Kyle Green. And that is to the chagrin of Coach Jones. Kyle Green didn't just go back door. He kicked in the back door. He washed his underwear. Uh, he had a, a, some iced tea and then put the ball in the hole. He actually did a good job that time. Southern Lab has actually, I mean, Madison Prep Academy or Chargers has actually brought in like their second string. They're, they're giving Brandon uh, Samson and the, the other uh, starters for their team a rest. Now, I think they're going to allow the other guys to get a little bit of experience on this team. They probably rarely get playing time 
if uh, a lot of it. And so this will be a good time right now for them to get some game experience. I think looking at some of these scores, as uh, the Madison Prep staff shared with us some of the stats and the schedule, I think these guys get a lot of playing time, just not much in the first quarter. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, because the game, you probably you know it by the second quarter or third quarter. You're right here. It's like what I do when I'm playing the season mode of Madden. If I'm blowing someone out 50 to nothing in the third, I start putting my backup quarterback in, my linebacker, and don't want anybody to get hurt and want some of those experience points. Well, you're seeing real life <laughs> right here. These kids are getting their experience points and upgrading their skills. Kobe Julian. That was a rapid-fire shot, uh, almost a prayer, and it rattled off the rim. That's the end of the third quarter with the score. The Madison Prep Chargers leading the Southern Lab Kittens 53-32. to You're watching Southern Lab Kittens basketball on LouisianaAllAmericanSports.com. Yeah, boy. Getting ready for the start of the fourth quarter. Madison Prep has a 21-point lead here. The score is 53. Southern Lab Kittens, 32. Madison Prep has brought the starters back in for the start of the fourth quarter. Southern Lab had a kind of a mini run right there. Was able to cut the lead down to 21 points. So they brought Brandon Sampson back into the game. Christian Thompson is back into the, into the game. Also, Jalen Brown is back into the game. The whole starting five. Joshua Anderson is in the game, too. And Jalen Brown goes to the hole real strong. Offensive foul. Southern Lab Kittens will get the ball. Southern Labs, on the other hand, has Tyler in the game. Stephen Carroll in the game. Shannon Foreman in the game. Black Bill is in the game. And number 10, Kyle Green is in the game. And Foreman was with the shot, but he missed the shot. Christian Thompson gets the rebound, brings the ball up. Swings the ball around. Gets the ball back at the top of the key. Gets it to their best player, Brandon Sampson. This guy is averaging 15 points a game so far this year. And Joshua Adams is actually second on their team with 13 and a half points per game. And Southern Lab fouls, which will give the Madison Prep the ball on the, on the side out. Inbound the ball to Brandon Sampson, knocked out by Stephen Carroll. Brandon Sampson inbounds the ball. Gets the ball to Joshua Anderson. Joshua Anderson swings the ball to Christian Thompson. Back to Sampson at the top of the key. He takes it. Gets the ball to number four, Joshua Anderson. Almost a steal right there. Southern Lab got it. Almost finished it. Christian Thompson goes up strong and gets fouled right there. Almost. I'm sorry, Joe. This has been the story of the night when I saw Shaman Foreman almost get his hands on the ball and almost steal it and almost tip it to Tyler Panyanavong. And, and it ends up in Christian Thompson's hand. He's at the foul line shooting. Dude, that's been the story all night. Southern Lab has almost had some success, particularly down low, but almost only counts in horseshoes and hand grenades. And uh, right now this, this, this Madison Prep Charger hand grenade is blowing up uh, all over the F.G. Clark Activity Center here at Southern University. Most definitely, Eric. I totally agree. Uh, it's kind of a synopsis of what the game has been like. It's like Madison Prep has been one step ahead and Southern Lab has been one step behind. Um, they're giving an effort. I give them their A for effort, but they're just coming up a little bit short on the hustle end. And, oh, and he blows the layup. Madison Prep right there. Both of the two players for Southern Lab fights for the rebound. Oh, he throws the alley-oop right there to Brandon Sampson from Thompson to Sampson. Oh, call the captain. That might do it right there. That's what you think. And uh, at that point, we're going to call time of death. Six minutes and ten seconds remaining in the fourth quarter as Madison Prep with that exclamation point by Brandon Sampson, I think has probably put this one out of reach. And uh, I think there's going to be some uh, singing going on. There's uh, Precious as uh, she's getting her drink of uh, chocolate shake from Mickey D's. 
Uh, there is Roseanne with her as she is uh, chowing down on uh, some beef jerky. Uh, she's going on the di protein diet. And uh, they're coming up to the Mike Spring Lemon Juice getting ready to sing. And why not just join them? <clears throat> I, uh, my point exactly. And we had a new, con new girl that wanted to join in and sing on the mic. I can't think of her name, but it's the girl of identity theft. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, that 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 yeah. should be some some should be some priceless it, singing. It, uh, Molly and and something that's on uh, uh, CBS. Mike and Molly. Yeah. Mike and Molly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's we want it. both of those. Y'all yeah. both of y'all come. Mike can come on down too. Right. We should do it as a couple. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll lead in. <clears throat> Turn out the lights. The party's over. They say that all good things must end. Call it a night. The party's over until tomorrow starts the same old thing again. And that is a backbreaker. Uh, I'll tell you what, the Southern Lab Kittens and Madison Prep Chargers, they're in the same district. Uh, Southern Lab busted out the whooping stick twice on Madison Prep. Once at their homecoming in regular season football, absolutely left little pieces of Chargers all over the field, and then, of course, denying them in the state semifinals. There's a little, uh, little crosstown um, cross school... Uh, payback here. Yeah, I think so. And um, it's always a rivalry between these two schools. Of course, with the football and basketball program, the football act program, actually Southern Lab has a, a better program and went further this year than Madison Prep did. And Madison Prep surprised us; they were able to get to the playoff. Yeah, I was I was surprised too. I mean, they really that was a team that really kind of improved as the season went on. And I mean, look after they got absolutely pummeled in their own backyard. That, that game, that state semifinal game between the Chargers and Kittens remained very close. Brandon Sampson from about 25, maybe 26 feet. Do you see why the St. John's uh, Red Storm wants him? Oh, most definitely. This guy here, beautiful jump shot right there, three-point shot. This guy's been all over the floor. Yurik Lazar has been an absolute thorn in the side. Oh, Brandon Sampson! Oh! Uh, what did, what did uh, Digital Underground used to call it? Funk, a uh, funk nasty. No look assist yeah. to uh, Jalen Brown off the hockey pass uh, from the backcourt. Holy moly. Madison Prep now leading 60 to 35. My goodness. Oh, man, what a phenomenal pass right there by Brandon Sampson. He went behind the back to the guy. <clears throat> to actually, to that was what? Uh, Joshua Anderson? I was Jalen Brown. Oh, Jalen Brown with the left hand dunk. Man. They've been awesome here tonight. But it, I knew it was going to be a tall task. I'm sure the Southern Lab kids knew it was going to be a tall task trying to upset uh, the Madison Prep Chargers. Because earlier this year, uh, on December the 27th, Madison beat them 60-33. to 33. That was that EBR tournament. Yeah. Yep, sure yeah. enough, at Terra High School, yep. And so coming in, they had already uh, played this team and kind of knew what they was going, going up against. And coming up a little bit short. So needless to say, uh, the under a yeah. yeah, the understatement of the evening will be that Madison Prep now takes control of District Six One A. Oh wow! And that's probably the smallest story in light of this. Just, I mean, this Southern Lab basketball team is very good. We showed them against Bel Air, a four A school, way above their classification, and they they handle the Bengals pretty handily. Brandon Sampson now with the basketball. I mean, they're not just beating up on 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 a, on a. Oh my goodness! Madison Prep is just pulling out the stops now as number four, Joshua Anderson on the assist from Brandon Sampson, buries a three and gets a four-point opportunity as he was slapped on the way up. And uh, well, it, when it rains, it pours. Oh, man, this guy is showing the whole repertoire now. He's showing that he can pass. He's showing that he can shoot. He's showing that he can dunk. He's showing leadership. He's showing everything out here. And St. John's is going to get a hell of a player coming right here out of Baton Rouge. You know, when he was a freshman, I played a pickup game against Brandon Sampson and some other guys in the gym, and I actually did partially reject one of his shots. I'm going to tell that story <laughs> for as long as I last. <laughs> yeah. That's my 15 minutes right there. Sheldon Carroll from downtown. No good. Rebound. For Foreman misses the rebound. It is picked up, though, by uh, Jordan Booker, and he's fouled, and he will go to the line to shoot two. Jordan Booker has been kind of quiet tonight. He's been maybe the best player for them so far tonight. But he's never getting given up. Every time he had the ball, he goes up strong and was able to uh, draw the foul and go to the free throw line. I, I'm just a couple At of those plays. Point, yeah. A couple of those plays in the fourth quarter, I'm still replaying yeah. in my mind. Wow, wow. And uh, my goodness. It's exciting. This guy showed the whole package tonight. Madison Prep has actually put the whole district on notice. Man. Because this is actually going to be a big story uh, tomorrow. They're going to show this guy showed his whole repertoire tonight. Had big numbers tonight. 
And I'm pretty sure the other coaches are looking, and they better be ready for these Madison Prep charges. Yeah, they better get their popcorn and everything else ready. Well, as, as, as while we're quoting rappers, as Bubba Sparks would say, it's getting ugly in here. Uh, Madison Prep trying to get across the timeline. They get it out to uh, Antoine. Antoine puts it on the ground and uh, kicks it all the way across from downtown. Oh, he just made it look easy. Uh, that was Joshua Anderson on the assist from Demarius Antoine. Here, go ahead. Carroll with the ball. And he steps up and he gets it to Chris, Chris Allen. Allen gets it out to Jordan Booker from downtown off the back of the iron. No good. Carroll with the rebound. Booker steps up in the lane. Nice pass to Blanchard. Really gets rejected again by LeBlanc. But no, it's not a rejection. They're going to call that a foul. That will send Veal to the line to shoot two. And Madison Prep has absolutely owned the kittens under the paint. If you can't score under the paint, you're not going to win. You're not going to win, exactly, and it started out that way from the first quarter on. No, I meant not under the paint. Yeah, in the paint. Yeah. Um, under the goal, in the paint, these guys have smothered uh, Southern Lap Kittens tonight. They've, I know they've probably had at least ten rejections I've seen in the game. Uh, clean blocks. Um, they almost remind me of how can Kentucky Wildcats are. They just have a phenomenal uh, front front court, and they're just smothering the Southern Lab Kittens of any type of offense on the inside. There goes Demarius Antoine, wide open. Nobody was on Joshua LeBlanc. And I can see Chris Allen motioning the veal. Maybe that was his man. Uh, kicks it over. Excuse me to Carroll. Carroll in the lane. Nice clutch shot there by Carroll on the assist from Bledrick Veal. And there's some, mis there's, some, there's some communication going on that you can tell that somebody was off of their defensive assignment by the body language. Uh, and now for, uh, get that out of here. Chris Allen with the rejection of uh, Jaron Whitfield. 68-39. My goodness. Oh, the wow, humanity. wow, wow. And actually, Madison Prep uh, has actually been on a 19-game winning streak. So this, this game here tonight, is actually, we're going we're gonna to call this game. We already called it. So this is going to be 20 in a row for these guys. This is, this is just amazing to watch, man. Watching a high school team just. And Tyler Panyanavon goes through and gets the and one, does he? Yes. Yeah, he gets the and one. Great body control right there. He was able to avoid the charge and keep his balance, and be able to concentrate on the shot and be able to put the shot and make the shot. And he's rewarded with an extra free throw. And Tyler takes the free throw and makes it. We have three minutes and six seconds left in the fourth quarter. Madison Prep leads 68-42. to 42. The game is not looking too good for the Southern Lab kids. But if you want to hear about it, why don't you join us tomorrow at 11 o'clock a.m. on Saturday for the Louisiana All-American Sports Show. We talk about the game of the week, about this game. We also talk about local area high school sports. We also talk about college sports. We talk about the big boys in the NFL with the playoffs is looming. The big games are going to have this weekend. Join, join us tomorrow at 11 o'clock, 96.9 WHYR, the Louisiana All-American Sports Show. And remember, we are a low-power station. Did you tell them how to catch us online, Piper? You can catch us online at whyr.org. So uh, from downtown, that's going to rattle out no good. We're coming up on 2 minutes, 26 seconds remaining in the ball game. Here come the kittens. Bounce past Tyler Panyanavong down low near the uh, baseline. Not even close. That wasn't even close. Low percentage shot. Not the greatest effort at the rebound. You, you see, oh, 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 we have a timeout. There's a player down, and he's in pain, Piper. Oh man! You hate to see a player when it's looks like is that uh, Blagicville? Well, let's see. I don't see the Mohawk. That might be. I and that's now. I am hoping that is not the ankle. I'm hoping it's a cramp because I saw him touching his uh, his, his hamstring. And there goes Coach uh, Moore and Coach. Um, oh boy! Looks like. Uh, Blagicville. That's got to be. That's, he's the only one I don't see up. Yeah, that's him. I recognize him. That's him. I don't know if it's a, a cramp. It's looking like he's just cramping so far. But we'll see. The training staff is over there. The coach is over there. They're talking to the young man. You say to see a good kid like this get hurt when the game is so far and it reaches a 24-point game. Uh, I hope it's just a cramp from DeAndre. You know, his body, he hasn't been playing basketball. Maybe his body hasn't been conditioned for 32 minutes of ball. You know, I'm, I'm hoping. It looks like they're stretching him, and that's, I hope they're stretching him, and I hope that's not the ankle. It looks like they're stretching him, and you hit, a, you hit on a good point. He's been playing a, a, real hard this game. He's been to the free throw line. He's taken a lot of physical contact. He's had 
four or five uh, shots that have been blocked. He's been under there. He's, he's drawn four or five fouls. He's been to the free throw line at least six times tonight. And so maybe you're right. He's played extensive minutes tonight. And we're not used to seeing him doing that by coming off of an injury. So I, I hope that's it. I'm, it looks, yeah, I'm, I'm concerned because I cannot tell if they're stretching or if they're massaging the ankle. If it's the ankle, that's a problem. If it's the knee, that's a big problem. When the ankle's the injury he had, oh, oh no. Oh, boy. Well, let's see. Wait, baby. Maybe he's walking. Let's see if he can walk it off. He, he, I, I can tell he does not want to be carried off, but they, they got to do it. I, I hate to see it. Don't, but don't, don't make it worse. Yeah, and unfortunately here in um, Louisiana All-American Sports Show game of the week, we don't have instant replay. We have a lot of things, but we don't have instant replay no. where we can go back we're and look at the injury. Yeah, we're yeah not yet. We're, we're trying to get there. Hey, once upon a time, we were tape delayed, not live. So we're, we're, making, we're taking baby steps. Great show of sportsmanship right there by Madison Prep Chargers. Even though they're blowing this team out, they still was concerned about one of their comrades. I'm pretty sure these guys know each other off off of the court, and they, they, they come up playing basketball together. Well, yeah, it's, it's a fraternity. It's a local fraternity. You know, these kids all know one another. You know, it's just like um, you see them in tournaments and in, in, uh, summer league ball, and, you know, and they don't, they, they don't they, you know, they're not too far from one another. They know each other. You know, it's a circuit. Bounce pass down low, and that's uh, going to be in the hands of number 20, uh, Marquise Bowder in the game. And, oh, my goodness, that was a nasty little bank shot by Malcolm Roach. Malcolm Roach, if you recall, was the backup quarterback and played defense and was just all over the place for the Chargers in the football field. I remember that. Very uh, talented player. He was good. Man, look, he's, he is. He is. I, I tell you, I would not want to get double fouled by Yurik Lazar and Malcolm Roach down in the paint. I mean, they could be, they could be the bad boys, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Land beer and Mahorn. Yep. I mean, I'd hate to get pinballed by them. You know, you run in the one, the one, one bumps you, the other one knocks you down. Yeah, or either uh, Charles Oakley and uh, Anthony, Mason? Anthony Mason. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Shannon uh, Foreman at the foul line. He uh, connects. We'll update your, your screen at home as Madison Prep has extended the lead to uh, 70 to 45. Second shot is good by Foreman, and so that will uh, cut the lead down back to uh, 24, 24 points. And up and in for the Madison Prep. They add to their lead. Score now is 72 to 46. It's only a minute and 24 seconds left in the fourth quarter. This game is winding down. Madison Prep has all its starters out of the game. Brandon Sampson, Joshua Anderson, Jalen Brown, Yuri uh, Lazard, and Christian Thompson are all on the bench. Madison Prep is allowing the other guys to get a little bit of experience and a little bit of playing time here. The second unit is in and you know, Piper, this is, that's, a, that's another almost for the for the kittens. So you saw Jordan Booker go up. He had the height. He had the release, even though he was fouled, and he couldn't he couldn't put it in the basket. It's, and this could be a three point opportunity. Just little things. It's almost like Piper on every possession, one little thing separated these two teams, and you pile up one little thing through 32 minutes of basketball, and you have one big gap in the final score. You're exactly right. You had mentioned something earlier about on the football side of it. Southern Lab is a far more superior organization right now than the Madison Prep, and they just got their football started. So they're geared mostly toward basketball. And so their organization, their coaching staff and everything, is, right now is a little bit ahead of Southern Lab kittens uh, at this time. And so this is the thing. I think Madison Prep is a school I see that's coming up on the uprise. Their football team is, is – um, from last year to this year is making big strides and also Southern Lab. So this team is going to see each other. I think this this is the making of a great rivalry for years it, to come. It, it absolutely is, Piper. I mean, you can see it. You can see these kids are leaving out on the court. You haven't seen any stoppage of hustle. I was noticing one of the kids that just came in the game looked familiar to me. That's number two. That's Jeff Jones, Jr. That's Coach Jones' son. Now, I remember back, back in the old days when he was a little boy, must have been sixth, seventh, eighth grade, something like that, and he is this kid has grown. Uh, I'm guessing he's a freshman. But uh, my goodness, it's just, it's just the, watching the circle of, of these athletics. If he has, uh, if, if he can show the uh, the hustle and effort that I'm sure his father demands and the basketball IQ of his dad, uh, he's gonna be he could be growing to one heck of an on the floor coach. He's got a nice long body for. I'm guessing he's a freshman because I remember he was about 10 years old when I first met the young fellow. He's sophomore. Sophomore, okay. Sophomore, but you hit it right on the head. Coming from a great pedigree. 
and being able to not only uh, have the game, he can learn the game also from a coaching standpoint and you know, possibly can you know, use that uh, great intelligence and great background from his dad to propel him far in this, you know, in this, in this, in this uh, uh, field. Absolutely. I, I agree with you. And we'll, we'll see how he develops. They just got some talent. I mean, Mike, I'm just looking at the end of that bench, and it's like, I, I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't bet. I would, I, what was that movie with Woody Harrelson, uh, White Men Can't Jump, when they're, when they're betting on the playground? Right. Uh, don't let any of these kids take you on because you're getting hustled. Right. <laughs> they got some talent. And, man, you saw the Lambs put up 50 points against a very good Madison prep team. I mean, you know, that's, that's, a, that's a healthy score in high school basketball. But uh, when your opponent has 74, whew, ain't much doing there. And they're pretty much on their average. They actually average 71 points a game and hold opponents to 42 points a game. And so they're pretty much on their average right now. They, they have 75 and they held Southern Lab to 50 points. Did a great job tonight. I just, uh, I'm very, very impressed by what I see with Madison Prep uh, Chargers. And I'm just very, very impressed, very impressed with uh, Brandon Sampson and hoping we can give a, uh, have a word with him when yeah, the game's I'm over. Sure we can. Um, with 6.9 seconds left. Let's go ahead because we want these players get off the court with a quickness. So um, it looks like at this is the end of the game. The final score in all probability will be uh, 74-50. We're going to sign off immediately after the final buzzer. So uh, for Gerard Piper, this is Eric Hatfield. Tune in tomorrow, Louisiana All-American Sports on 96.9 FM, WHYR.org, streaming worldwide. Good night. Good night. <laughs>